vacation and now I have a lot of catching up to do including egg maintenance. So I figured I would film the process of really what we do when it comes to maintaining eggs throughout the incubation process. I don't think we've ever done a video on that before. So let's get started. So as you can see, our incubator is full almost. We can fit a few more clutches in there, but it's still a pretty full incubator with all sorts of snake eggs. Well, I'll show you all those in a second. What I have here is a cart for kind of a workstation. This is how I maintain our eggs or do the egg maintenance from time to time, usually about once a week. We have dechlorinated water. We've got jock itch powder or lotrimin powder in case there's any mold growth. You can dust some of this on and that prevents more from growing. Paper towels come in handy. A nice concentrated version of chlorhexidine for sterilization purposes if needed. The pen is just to turn my camera on and off because it's still broken and obviously, Chocolate is needed for this task. So over here, the eggs in question belong to all sorts of different snakes of ours. Let's see, ooh, these are the new ones. Those are blue beauty rat snakes. Those were laid when we were on vacation. I have not seen those yet. We have those and these. There's actually quite a few that uh, were laid while we were gone. So I'm really curious to see how those are doing. I think these are some of them. These are, if I remember correctly, oh yeah, the mangroves laid more eggs. And uh, I don't know if they're gonna make it. They're really dented. Uh, oh, that one will make it. I think that one will be fine. That's still nice and plump. That one's probably gonna go bad. That one's probably gonna go bad. This one's a maybe. Basically they laid them and hid them. And since they're mildly venomous, our staff doesn't dig around much to look for eggs, but they happened to find some. They were just laid probably two days before they were discovered. But yeah, we're gonna go through each one and I'll show you my process. Also, for the record, all those cords each have a purpose. Some are doing the live stream, some are maintaining our internet and Wi-Fi. So they're, they're a little messy right now, but I think Ed's gonna set up this server room as an actual server room soon, because so far it's just been a server counter. But don't mind that mess. All right, our first clutch is gonna be those blue beauties. Let's see what our staff did. Oh, our staff wrote on them too. Wow, why are these yellow? They're almost green. That's so weird. Okay, well, we have, let's see, what did they pick as a theme on these eggs? Looks like a beach theme, vacation maybe? Oh yeah, there's like a sleeping person on there, maybe? I don't know, that's awesome. Okay, beach theme they did and a uh, goldfish, I see a flower, a banana, a UFO, or is that a sombrero? I don't know. Uh, we've got a, a lemon, a kiwi, we've got a snake there, bumblebee, I don't know what theme they did. What do all these have in common on these yellow eggs? Let us know what you think in the comments. We've got a giraffe, is that a crab? Or is that the sun? Let me know if you can crack the code on what that theme is. And let's see how well they did. Ooh, there's still some moisture. Okay, these were laid two weeks ago, so I think they did a fantastic job setting up these eggs all on their own. I'm gonna add some water, but I'll probably be adding water to a lot of eggs today. And what I'm basically feeling for is how dry this perlite is. And if it doesn't stick to it itself, then it's pretty dry. You're looking for this kind of a feel where you can see little pieces clumping together or sticking together, and that's due to the moisture. But when it's all just kind of separated and just dry feeling, then it does need some extra moisture. And we like to leave gaps in the corners of the bins because that's where we pour our water. And I like to put my hand in the way so the water doesn't splash on the eggs. Sometimes I have better aim and I can like pour it like this. Oh, that actually worked pretty well. And you don't wanna pour water on the eggs directly. That can be harmful to the baby on the inside. So we're just gonna pour water around the eggs to re-wet that perlite. All right, these look good. All the eggs look healthy. Nothing seems to have gone bad. So back in the incubator they go. And that's pretty much what we're gonna do with all of these. Now this is our Pueblin milk snake clutch. Ooh, we've got a little bit of denting here, a little bit of discoloration there, which is odd. I don't remember that, but that's what our paper towels are for. Looks like a little bit of the discoloration like down here is caused by fungus because it just wipes right off. So I wiped it off there. And then I'm going to take the Lotrimin powder and just pat or dap a little bit. Come on, like a baby's bottom. There we go, okay. Perfect, that should prevent the mold from coming back. All right, they look good. The perlite is still wet, so it's weird that these are indented a little bit, but I don't wanna lay a paper towel directly on the eggs at this point, because it won't be good for the baby. So I'm just gonna see how this pans out. Ooh, but then we have these eggs. This is the Hypo 
het pot? Het patternless, that's right. Hypo het patternless eggs. Ooh, those are not looking very good, unfortunately. Okay, well, what we're seeing here is this teal or turquoise color. That's not a good sign on an egg. That means it's gone bad. So to prevent that from spreading, even though healthy eggs uh, are resistant to a lot of things through the egg or through the shell, they can succumb to certain funguses and other illnesses essentially from bad eggs. So I am going to remove that one. This one I'm gonna take away because look at all that discoloration on the ladybug egg. It feels good though. Oh, but it's so goopy. Oh, let's see what the bottom looks like. If over 50% of the egg looks bad, that's when I call it. Oh, that looks good still. That looks good. Okay, well, I'll give it a couple more days. I'm going to instead wipe it off, dry it off, and try some Lotrimin powder on it. This has saved many an egg for me. Okay, and now this egg, I'm just gonna do the same thing with. Obviously, you don't wanna coat the entire egg with Lotrimin powder, because you want the egg to still be able to breathe, but you do wanna cover everything that's affected on it with fungus, so I had to add quite a bit to that one. Back into the incubator. Let's see how Azura and Farkas's eggs are do- Oh, those are not looking good. These, it looks like I had actually treated that one with low No, it doesn't look like that actually. Okay, I think these are all going bad. I mean, a lot of them are bad already. I think I'm gonna toss all but that one, honestly. With the amount of mold I see, that if there's that much affected surface area of the egg, those eggs are bad. So, man, that- Bites. Okay. Well, I'm gonna keep the domino. Okay, you know, roll the luck, lucky egg, and we'll take care of that one. It's not often that an entire clutch like that goes bad, but Azura hasn't been the best breeder, but I guess we've only paired her with one male, so I wonder if it's Farkas's fault. Could be anyway, but you know what? We're gonna at least try to save this last egg. There's a chance it's gonna go bad too. Maybe it wasn't a good egg to begin with, but we're gonna cushion it a little bit more. And the hognose perlite, I like to keep a little bit drier, so this looks like it's pretty dry with the way it's just kind of being flung around instead of sticking together, but I actually want that. Down below is where it's wet, and that's perfect for the hognoses, which like it a bit drier. I actually also see a lot of condensation on the lid, which means it's wetter than I want it to be, so I'm gonna dry that off on my pants quick, and then put it back. Try to keep it a little bit on the drier side. Hopefully that egg makes it. On the plus side, Pixie and Buck's eggs look fantastic, except for a little bit right here. But that's such a small amount, I'm not even going to treat it with Lotrimin powder. I'm just going to cover them up and put them back. And take a look at these two clutches. We have first Audrey and Bueller, the hog noses. Those look good. Those eggs are growing. They're like one and a half times the size they were when they were first laid. This discoloration is normal, by the way. Hog noses, if they get a little too humid, start becoming a little bit transparent or they develop what's called windows on the side of the egg. It doesn't hurt the baby at all. It just means humidity was a little bit higher than what you were looking to achieve. So we have a few eggs here that are showing some uh, windows, but for the most part, they actually look really good. And then look at this clutch here. This is Moonstone, the corn snake rescue of ours. And oh, those look perfect, absolutely perfect. Okay, back in the incubator. The perlite is still damp, so I don't have to do anything with these eggs. Here's an example of how much that Lotrimin powder really does help. This is mitosis and jesters, or bruz eggs, the hog noses, and they look good. They're growing really well, but if you look, this is where we did the bacon-themed clutch. This egg was supposed to be the ribs, if you remember that, like rib cage, and I do see a little bit of fuzzy, um, fuzziness to the eggs. We have a little bit of fungus growing back, but this one was quite fuzzy before we left for vacation, so I put the Lotrimin powder on it, and this is like nothing in comparison to before. So we may have saved that egg. So what I'm going to do, since I do still see a little bit of fungus, we're going to wipe that off, and I'll just reapply. I'll kind of wipe this one off too. Always fold the paper towel, by the way, so it doesn't come into contact with the same spot. You have like a fresh side of paper towel to clean the other eggs, or just use a new chunk of paper towel. Um, but yeah, we're gonna just reapply some Lotrimin powder on these guys. There we go, that seems to be working quite well. Awesome, and also take a look, our very exciting clutch, which we can't tell you about yet, but look, Jafina and Bruz, eggs are growing and developing. God, you can see veins in them, whoa. Okay, take a look, this is kind of a fun part about checking in on eggs too, is seeing the development. This egg, if you look really close, you might be able to see the little veins running along the egg, egg right there. Oh my gosh, we're growing a snake, guys. This is so cool. Okay, back into the incubator. And it 
looks like some of Om Nomlet's eggs are not doing so hot. If they're that dark brown, they're dead. So that has to get tossed. Uh, this one looks like it's a goner too because it's caved in in the middle and it has some fungus growth around it. So I think that's bad enough to call. Another thing I've noticed on bad eggs is like with this one, obviously you can't tell this on your end, but it's slimy to the touch. So that's a bad egg. And if you squeeze it, they feel solid. Like there's a potato inside, like a, a potato with a little bit of give. But that one is a bad egg. They should feel buoyant like a water balloon. That's a, that's a healthy feel to the egg. All right, I think I've gotten rid of the bad ones. This one is iffy. Uh, I'm gonna have to have, keep a close eye on that one. It's not slimy, it's just a weird color. So I'm gonna put some powder on it, see if that does the trick. And okay, I think the rest are still salvageable. Okay, here's a clutch a lot of you are interested in. We've gotten a lot of angry calls because of this clutch. Here's our experimental clutch where we are testing whether the color orange on a marker affects the hatch rate of the egg. And look, all of the eggs, all 11 of them look Perfect, that is so cool. And yes, we have been receiving quite a few um, unhappy calls from people wondering why we would do something like this and risk the health of the animal. Well, to be honest, it's for science. We really truly wanna know if marker will affect the hatch success or hatch rate of the eggs. So this is just educational. This is what we do here at Snake Discovery. We want to learn so that we can improve the methods that we use to breed reptiles. And take a look, all 11 look great. I don't even have to add water. It's maintaining a nice humidity. We're just gonna put them right back in. Okay, here's a weird situation, or a unique one, I guess. Not really weird. This is the clump of Brad's eggs. She had so many eggs. Unfortunately, quite a few of them went bad right away, but the remaining eggs seem to be maintaining health pretty well. That is, except for this egg in the back here, that brown colored egg. Unfortunately, it is so solidified to the other eggs that I can't remove it without risking tearing the eggshell, which obviously I don't want to do. So I'm just leaving it there. And like I said earlier, a healthy egg should be resistant to a bad one being connected to it. I mean, it happens in the wild. Eggs go bad in the wild. Eggs are infertilized in the wild. So snakes, you know, have just evolved to be a bit protected against the threat of a bad egg next to it. So we're just gonna let nature take its course on that one since I can't remove it anyway. I'll treat the rest as best as I can. I did see a little bit of mold growth on a few of them, so I wiped it off. Gonna treat them with low trimming powder. Not even gonna, gonna try to save that egg. All right, I think the rest look good though. And our last clutch that's in the incubator is from Circus and Monroe, the two bull snakes. These are, this is one of our first clutches this year. And they're doing really well, except for one, it looks like. I bet that one I can separate or detach from the others. It doesn't seem to be connected with much of that adhesive. We'll just slowly peel this. And there we go, ta-da! I'm gonna clean up some of the perlite that came into contact with the egg, just to be on the safe side. Kind of cushion in those eggs again. And add some water, since it does seem a little bit dry. Oops, I spilled a little bit on that egg. Let's just dry that off. Okay, back into the incubator for our last clutch. So there you go, that's how we take care of our eggs. Usually about once a week, we'll go through everything in the incubator and just do a visual check on the eggs, feel the perlite, um, just get an overall feel for how the eggs are doing, remove them if needed, treat them if needed with um, powder, Lotrimin powder, which is super awkward to walk through the checkout with. People think you have issues, but I'm like, I swear it's for snake eggs, and they never believe me. But anyway, that's what we do. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Maybe you learned something new. You may have noticed that some of the eggs went bad and had to be um, discarded, and that happens, it's nature. Not all the eggs are gonna make it, and that's why snakes lay so many of them. So if you are breeding snakes and you encounter eggs that go bad, it's not necessarily your fault, especially if the humidity is right, you're using perlite or vermiculite or another good Good medium and if they're at the appropriate temperature plus you know they paired the snakes properly and saw locks you can do all of that perfectly and still have eggs go bad so don't blame yourself we encounter it every year to some degree we do seem to have a lot of great clutches that are doing very well we had some eggs go bad like the one indigo egg I noticed that went bad today and we had a couple of those or a few of those hognose snake eggs that went bad but again not the end of the world we still have a lot of great eggs that look fantastic. So I'm so excited for this year's baby season. It seems like the first ones that are due to hatch, let's see, today is June 18th. 
And let's see, the Mad Hog eggs were the oldest? No, we had some. I don't remember which. We had some at the beginning of May laid. So that means beginning of July. So like two weeks out from the day I'm filming this video, we should start getting babies. I can't wait. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support. I hope you're enjoying some of the sneak peeks of babies and eggs that I've been sending you. And we'll see you next time. And actually, if you're still here, check out my genius way of setting up the hyperlapse here. Yeah, if you're wondering how we got that secondary angle for the hyperlapse, I did this. I, we're very high tech here at Snake Discovery. We use all the best and newest and most innovative equipment, including an old ladder and snake feeding tongs with a phone rubber banded to the end. Okay, yeah, I really need some better equipment, but hey, it worked.